Hi. Now if we took an object, say this book here, we all know that if you just released it, it would fall downwards. Why is that? Well, all objects possess a weight. This is the force of gravity pulling it towards the center of the Earth. And we can represent this by putting a little arrow on this acting downwards, pulling it down. This is representative of the force, the weight. We could just put W for weight there. Mind you, I'm going to put a little subscript here, B, weight of the book. Now suppose I put an obstacle in its path, say a table, then that book would come to rest on the table surface and not move. We say that it's in equilibrium. So why doesn't it move? Well, there's got to be an upward force supporting it. Let's just mark that upward force in here. Pushing up from the tabletop. This upward force is often called a contact force or reaction for short and it acts perpendicularly to the surface. Now this reaction force, we don't tend to write like this. In questions like this, we put that force acting through a point. We treat the book as a particle. That's a point mass. We'll look at that in some detail later on. But for now, we put that force acting up through this point here, R. I'm going to write it with a subscript, RB, the contact force, the reaction, okay, of the book on the table. And we'll remove this force here. Now in a situation like this, the contact force, RB, would be equal to the weight of the book because it's at rest in equilibrium. Now I want to introduce you to Newton's third law. It states that when one object exerts a force on another there is always a reaction of the same kind which is equal and opposite in direction to the acting force. Now suppose we took our book and table and separated them and looked at the forces acting on each of these objects. We've already seen that for the book we've got the weight of the book acting downwards, WB. And we had this upward force, the normal contact force, the reaction. Let's just mark it back in here again, RB, the reaction on the book. Now by Newton's third law there's going to be an equal and opposite force acting back down on the table, pushing down on the table. So if we were to mark that in, say something like this, it would be RB. What other forces would act on the table? Well there's got to be the weight of the table wanting to pull it downwards. We'll just mark it in here as W again for weight, but we'll put a subscript T, WT. But the table is now resting on the floor. And why doesn't the table fall through the floor? That's because there's a force pushing upwards from the floor on the table. It comes through these legs. Let's just say that this one is R1. And this one here is R2. These contact forces, R1 and R2, might in fact be equal to one another, but that depends on the placement of the book. We won't go into that detail here. The table rests on the floor. There's going to be equal and opposite forces to these reactions here, acting downwards on the floor. There'll be the weight of the floorboards, and so on. 
but obviously we're going to have to draw a line somewhere so this would be just the forces say acting on our table and book. Now suppose we return to the book on the table and it's in equilibrium still. If it's in equilibrium at rest marking the forces we've got the weight of the book WB and we've got the normal contact force RB. But suppose this time we just try and push very gently to the right here on the book but it doesn't move. Then there must be an equal and opposite force to P acting in the opposite direction. Newton's third law. That force is called friction. We'll denote it by F. But if we were to look at the forces acting on the table just by separating our diagrams. The forces acting on the book would still be exactly the same, the weight of the book acting downwards, the normal contact force RB, the force that we're applying to the right P and the equal and opposite force back, the friction. But the forces acting on the table would be the reaction of the book RB pushing down the frictional force which acts this way would be trying to push the table in that direction F Newton's third law there'll be the other forces that we had here there'll be the weight of the table acting downwards WT and there'll be those contact forces here R1 R2 pushing upwards so this would be the kind of force diagram that we would have for the forces acting on the table. Now suppose we had someone pulling their sledge along in the snow. Let's have a look at the forces acting on the sledge. Well there will be the weight of the sledge. If we assume that this is a particle, a point mass, the weight would act through that point there. W acting downwards there'll be the contact force from the snow here pushing up on the sledge that will act upwards then we'll call it R. This person is pulling the sledge through a rope here and when we exert a force in a rope we often call it tension so it's quite normal to call that force there then T and if we're thinking of this as a particle then this force T would act back through that particle there. There'll also be a resistance to motion most probably. There'll be a very small frictional force due to the snow here but nonetheless there'll be some kind of resistance, friction, that will act in that direction. And if we were to start to look at the forces acting on the person. This person would be experiencing an equal and opposite force T on his hand. That would be wanting to pull back in this direction. There will be other forces which I won't mark on on the man like his weight, his forward force for instance and the contact force from the ground. But hopefully this gives you some idea of how we can start to draw force diagrams. And as we work through problems in the videos you'll see how we develop these force diagrams in relation to particular questions. So for now I hope that's given you some idea then and how we can apply Newton's third law.